I love Japan. I think this much is obvious. We filmed six episodes here, and I've been here many times for pleasure, too. Is it an obsession? Perhaps. That's a strong word. But I'll tell you what I am unequivocally obsessed with Japanese vending machines. Even before I came here for the first time, I had heard legend of them. Legions of pristine machines displaying exotic beverages with weird names and brash packaging. Some even dispensed soup and curry. And how can I possibly ignore that schoolyard rumor of the machines that dispensed the taboo and the illicit? Could it be true? Was it possibly true? It was absolutely true. First thing you'll notice about Japanese vending machines is that they're everywhere. Everywhere. Street corners, hotel lobbies, ferries, train station platforms. Not only are they in every city, but they're also on top of mountains and in rural locations that seemingly feel in the middle of nowhere with no obvious person to solve. Not only are they in every conceivable locale, but they're so densely distributed, it's almost a joke. There are four million vending machines in Japan. That means there's one vending machine for every 30 people. That's a lot of vending machines. In the side street behind my hotel in Akihabara, look how many there are. There's a reason for this. Often owned by large beer companies like Asahi and Kirin, as well as big beverage brands, anyone can lease a vending machine and the company will take care of the maintenance and stocking. So it's really easy to get one going. And in Japan, there's no vandalism to these machines, there's no damage, and they never seem to be out of order or unstocked. That's why it works here, and probably only here. You can also get, unbelievably, cigarettes and beer in vending machines too. They have an ID card validation built right in. So don't get any ideas, kiddos. They come in all shapes and sizes too. The standard, the slimline, the chonky boys, and if you're lucky and approach quietly, you can even find herds of them nesting in the shade on street corners. Japan has four million vending machines and no garbage cans, but the country is spotless. It doesn't add up, so how does it work? Well, a lot of the vending machines have recycling bins built right into them. Failing that, the owner of the machine will often put recycling bins nearby. But no matter what, you always take your garbage home with you in Japan. Always. Hey friends, this episode is brought to you by a product I am very happy exists, the Manscaped Handyman. Now, I have a beard, fairly obviously, and I like having a beard. What I don't like having is neck hair. Reasonably easy problem to solve at home. Totally different story when I'm on the road. Lots of extra equipment, lotions, potions, all of that stuff. And that is where the Handyman is perfect because it's got this unique dual blade system where it's got a standard foil shaver on one side and the long hair leveler blade on the other, which can knock down up to three days worth of growth. Perfect for keeping the old neck hair in check when I'm on the road. Speaking of being on the road, the Handyman is the perfect travel companion because it's small, it's compact, it's got this handy blade cover, and it has a 60 minute rechargeable battery, which is charged using USB-C, which I have tons of when I'm traveling, so I can very easily bring it on all of my trips, and I do. And because I'm such a big fan of this little guy, I have worked out a little deal with the people at Manscaped. Go to manscaped.com, type in the promo code ATTACHE, that's A-T-T-A-C-H-E, and you will get 20% off your handyman, and believe me, it's worth every penny. Payment is clever too. You can use coins, of which you will have several thousand after spending just a few days here. As you put your money in, the machine will light up the choices you can buy with however much money you've inserted so far. Alternatively, you can use your IC card like Suica or Pasmo, even if it's on your phone. Not all machines have this feature, but a lot of them do. Yes, you can find some odd things in them sometimes. Beef. Pokemon. Women, apparently but the vast majority of them serve drinks. Sodas, juices, waters, a staggering variety of canned coffee, including the legendary Boss brand, whose spokesman for decades has been none other than Tommy Lee Jones. <laughs> but for me, I reach for one thing and one thing only, the elixir, the sweet nectar, the giver of life, Pakari Sweat. Growing up in Hong Kong, this stuff was 
everywhere. And I had convinced myself that it was actually sweat and the Japanese were all insane. Turns out I was wrong, but there is a reason it's called Picari Sweat. That's a sports drink, but it's a sports drink with a difference. It's actually good for you. It's made by a pharmaceutical company and it's designed to replace the electrolytes you lose through sweat. And the idea came from an employee of that pharmaceutical company and he was in hospital in Mexico suffering from gastroenteritis. He saw a doctor drink IV drip solution to rehydrate and he wondered if he could make a drink that would provide him with the water and the nutrients he needed to recover from his gastroenteritis and Picari Sweat was born. What does it taste like? Heaven. It's supposedly a mild grapefruit flavor but there's a sweetness to it and a saltiness too. It's just a hint of saltiness. It is without question the most refreshing drink I've ever had in my life. I am addicted to the sweat. And hey, if it's good enough for Cindy Crawford, it's good enough for me. I don't know what it is about these machines that enchants me so very much. Is it the ubiquity? Is it the variety? Is it the convenience? Maybe it's all of those things combined. But I have yet to find a vending ecosystem like this anywhere else in the world. And for this and many, many, many other reasons, I will continue to come back to Japan as often as I can.